Hello there. Back again with a long overdue update on some Japanese material that has been noteworthy over the past two months or so. And why is this taking so long to get up there apart from, you know, my college life and all that? Well, sources are a little dry for ProRes material at the moment. Quite dry all around. Um, recent Dragon Gate material has been all but impossible to find. And if anyone could point me in the right direction on that score, it would be very much appreciated. Um, and most other things I would say have gotten slower in getting in onto the internet. Substantially slower. Um, but we strive onwards. We keep going, and nevertheless, there is definitely some stuff here that's worth checking out. That's why I do a video like this to begin with, and I should be able to provide all the links to all of it in the description box. Um, so let's get started. Um, the first recommendation goes to Big Japan in the middle of September. A six-man tag match with um, guys that I'm not going to even attempt to string their names together. I'm not even familiar enough with Big Japan to put faces on all the names in this one. But even with that, I can still confidently say this felt exactly how a six-man tag match should feel like. There was enough tag team dynamics here, coupled in with certain guys standing out in terms of what they did and the interactions with others. With the interactions with others and that's the thing with this one you know there were all these different interactions going on to keep things interesting from start to finish you had some heavyweight versus junior spots you had a little hint of comedy from what I can recall um, perhaps in those spots I'm not my memory kind of fails me on that and you had some junior sequences that were not only fast but stiff as all hell as well so what more could you ask for this was a great match this was just um, really fun to watch, just highly recommended to check out. I would say four and a quarter stars for that one. Um, really good stuff there. Um, not seen a lot of Big Japan, but it might be their best match this year. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to watch more. Um, I definitely will try to watch more as the end of year um, saga of nominating all around the internet for wrestling begins. Um, which brings us to September 26th, one night where Noah and New Japan had big cards up to opposite each other. Pretty sure you can't call this a head-to-head -head battle, what with their working agreements and all that. But if you look at both shows, they, both shows, they tell the story of the pros and cons of Noah quite well, actually. Um, the New Japan show is fun to sit through from start to finish. There's some very good stuff. There's some occasional examples of greatness. And for the most part, most of the time, you never feel like you wasted your time watching the show. Um, with Noah, you struggle to get to the highlights of the show on occasion, but when the highlights of the show features an awesome match of the year contender, you can, you can forgive Noah for the most part. You know, that's exactly what happened here, I would say. You know, I would say that Shiny Navigation, the Noah show, was borderline unwatchable until we got to the title matches. And then when the show finished on such a high note, I felt elated regardless of the weak stuff that I had to sit through from there, you know? It felt worthwhile nonetheless. Um, but let's start with the highlights of the New Japan pay-per-view um, on September 26th, starting with Koji Kanemoto versus Davey Richards, which I'm sure a lot of people have already checked out because Davey Richards is on here. Um, I'll say this, I thought they, I thought, think Davey did a good job, a pretty good job of playing the evil foreigner here. It wasn't quite good enough to where he, he could get any memorable heat. But that was an uphill battle from the get-go, because this is Kanemoto's 20th anniversary match. The fans were 100% behind him, and they did sort of die any time that Davey got his offense in. There wasn't much chance it was going to be anything different than that, but it still stops the match from being great, in my opinion. Despite that, though, I will give them a lot of credit for making it more of an even contest than they could have had. It would have been very easy, I would say, for Kanemoto to go out there, hit his signature moves, and cause an anniversary. Um... I think Davey did look very good here. I think it lays the groundwork for a future in New Japan for the guy. And, you know, I'm not really sure if the fans would have really appreciated just him hitting a signature move. The fans in Japan are probably a little less receptive, receptive to that kind of thing. But it would have still been a very easy thing to do, a very easy trap for the match to fall into. And I definitely appreciate that they did not do that. They definitely made Davey look... I'm not going to say look like an equal because that's not true. It was more like, I would say, maybe 60-40, 70-30. No, I would say 60-40 in favor of Kanemoto. So, you know, very good match, definitely worth checking out. I wouldn't say great, some people probably will say great, but that's just me. Um, fans kind of stopped it from being great, it was kind of like that was the trap of the match. It was kind of really, really hard to get out of that, but still definitely very good. 
recommended check out and good stuff there. We move on to the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team title match from the show. Giant Bernard and Carl Anderson versus Yuji Nagata and Wataru Inoue. Um, from the forms that I observe, reaction to this one has been very different, I would say. There are some people who have this on their match of the year countdown. That, to me, is giving it way too much credit. And there are people who have said the first 15 minutes or so were almost unwatchable. I think that's giving it too little credit. I think the truth of this one lies somewhere in the middle. Um, what they did in the first 15 minutes was clearly based on mm, establishing personas, I guess. The best example being Bernard, who got to play the dominant big man with a memorable spot on Nagata. Um, I think that people who say this, is, this was a match of the year candidate are recognizing that establishment of personas, but overemphasizing the quality of it. You know, it was definitely present. But was it all that impressive at times? I'm really not sure it was. You know, often it just came off as, you know, basic face and heel dynamics, not really anything overly impressive. But it's definitely still enough to make it mildly interesting for the first 15 minutes to the point where once they kicked it into high gear for the last five to seven minutes, I can definitely feel justified in saying this was a great match. Not a classic like some people have it as, but I would still say it's worth watching. So take that for what you will. I would say four stars on that one. I think it's a great match. I don't think it's a classic match, but um, that's kind of my take on a bit of a bit of a. I'm not gonna say it's a controversial match because no one has got, got gone really um, apeshit over it. But well, that's the wrong word. I'm getting tangled up here. Just leave it with four stars. I would say great match. Um, moving on to the IWGP Heavyweight Championship match. Togi Makabe versus Masato Tanaka. Um, I will say this, I thought Tanaka was quite impressive here, I would say. He had a very cold, unfeeling presence about him, and I think the way he took control of the match very early on to begin with, I think it all meshed really well. You know, combine that with the weapon spots, and you've got a great domineering heel, you know. But what this match did not have, unfortunately, was an intense baby face. You know, I've given praise to Makabe's comebacks before, but he just wasn't there this time. He just was not there. Um, the comeback didn't feel as intense as and concentrated as it should have, as he has done in the past, in my opinion. You know, I think Tanaka was doing such a great job in his role that if Makabe had done a little better in his role, you could have created some real belief that Tanaka might win, even though that was never going to happen. You know, I think Tanaka made this a very good match, but Makabe could have made it a great match if he had been on form, and he just wasn't on form in this one, in my opinion, you know. He prevented it from being a great match. Um, so I'd still say three and three quarters. Um, very good match, just not great. Not, I don't know if I would recommend it, you know. I don't know what to say about that one. It really could have been a great match. There were some examples of greatness in it, but Maccabi just was not on form in this one, in my opinion. So that was kind of what um, hurt the match for me. And that does it for New Japan. So let's move on to the NOAA show, Shiny Navigation 2010 from September 26th. We're going to start off this line of recommendations with Kanemaru versus Kenta for the GHC Junior Heavyweight ta um, Tag, um, Junior Heavyweight Championship. I thought this started off really well. I thought it started off really well. I think it was I think it was Kanemaru who was having his lower back worked over by Kenta. You know, not the most familiar body part to be worked over in a match, so it was definitely interesting to begin with. Um, the stuff that made up the latter part of the match, though the latter two thirds, I would say, just felt a little too familiar in terms of Junior's action for me to give the match too much credit. You know, it was very good, but the action was nothing that I hadn't seen many times before. So I really can't give it a great rating. I'm going to say a three and three quarters. It was very good. Just some of the, a lot of the stuff was just a little too familiar. They had a really they had a really strong star. They had a really interesting kind of um, story going into it, but it kind of it. What well, I'm not going to say what. I'm not going to say it descended into like just spots because that's not really fair. It just kind of went from something a little more different to a little more familiar. That's kind of what happened, and to me, that kind of made the match fall a little flat towards the end. It wasn't unwatchable at any point. Don't get me wrong; it was still a very good match, just a little too familiar. So three and three quarters for that one. Moving on to the GHC Heavyweight Tag Team Championship match between. Um, with Yoshihiro Takeyama and Takuma Sano versus Kensuke Sasaki and Katsuhiku Nakajima. You know, this goes back to what I said about a, what a tag team match should feel like. You know, there were tag team dynamics, but you also had guys standing out as unique. 
Um, well, maybe unique is the wrong word because the story told here was very, very simple. And pretty much what you would expect just looking at the names in this match. You had Nakajima playing the feisty little guy, facing impossible odds against this, this pair of heavyweights, and that's all this match needed to be to be entertaining. You know, Nakajima was able to burst out with some offense at the appropriate time when Suzaki had worn down Takayama, although mm, Suzaki being brought in on a hot tag. He wasn't nearly as intense as he could have been. That was kind of what maybe kind of stopped the match from being great because, you know, that was probably the only thing stopping the match from being great because otherwise everything made sense. There were no foolish attempts to, you know, break the laws of physics or humanity or anything that would not happen in reality. Very enjoyable all around. I would definitely say check it out. It's a very, very good match. Just, um, it could have been great. There was just that one, you know, Suzaki, if, if he had been a little better, it could have been a great match. But as it stands, just a very good match. Um, which brings us to the great match, to the classic match, I would say. Um, the best match out of all this list, and definitely the one that's recommended a thousand times over, um, for the GHC Heavyweight Championship. Tagashi Segura versus Go Shiozaki. Um, I honestly think that this ma this one got downright scary in certain little portions. You know, when you have a match that's based on stiff action, that means you're doing something right. That means you're doing a lot of things right. To be honest, you know, give both these guys give both these guys a lot of credit because the the crowd certainly did not give them a lot of credit, and that was the only thing stopping this from being rated even higher. You know, just. This was an incredible war between two guys who made it perfectly clear they wanted to win because they were high stakes and they did that while staying smart and acting like human beings who get hurt when they get hit hard. And big thumbs up, big thumbs up for that. And don't take that to mean that at any point this match was not interesting because that, in my opinion, would be false. Um, this is my second favorite Noah match of the year. Four and a half stars. Um, absolutely awesome match. I, I'm just going to go ahead and say that. So, you know, once we get to the end of year stuff, Segura is going to be a big contender for 2010 MVP, in my opinion. You know, I will I will watch the complete Davey Tyler trilogy before I count Davey Richards out entirely, but he may not be the shoe-in that some people may have him down as already. So, that's it for match recommendations. Um, I would like to think that I'd be back on here again before end of year voting of all manner of things wrestling begins in earnest because when the New Japan Destruction pay-per-view that aired, um, didn't air, but it happened about two weeks ago, once that circulates, um, if it's worth talking about, I will probably be reviewing the whole show because if you look at that card, there's a lot of good stuff on there. So that will probably be the next thing I do. If it's not worth talking about, I might not do the review. I might just do another one of these kind of videos. Uh, it all just depends, but I don't. I do plan on being back on here before the end of your voting of first stuff begins in full swing. Um, so that's all for me now. I will talk to you guys later.